Good morning. So you, you stole my line. I was going to say, <laughs> you know, at an NEJM group, we uh, we don't have quite as many publications to worry about as John does, <laughs> um, but still lots of good metadata stories. Uh, the family of content that we uh, that we have is, of course, the New England Journal of Medicine, focusing on original medical research. Uh, we have a family of medical researchers, uh, <laughs> medical newsletters uh, focused on clinicians called uh, Journal Watch, um, and a growing line of CME and educational products uh, that we're offering, as well as things like physician career resources. Uh, one thing we do have to consider when we think about how we manage our metadata is the fact that we have uh, 200 years of archive content online now for the New England Journal of Medicine as of uh, 2010. Uh, when we think about something like bringing up a new topic hub, for example, it really is a, a decision point along the way is how far uh, into the archive of content we want to go in terms of tagging. It can represent uh, a fairly signif significant legacy tagging effort as well as content management and content republication. Uh, so we definitely have to put that on scales. Um, one of the things we're thinking about right now quite a bit is how we can aggregate content uh, across product lines. So for example, if we have uh, a set of research articles uh, in cardiology at the, in the New, Eng New England Journal of Medicine, uh, we might have a set of cardiology related uh, li uh, literature summaries in Journal Watch, uh, a set of physician jobs uh, in cardiology, um, and then uh, CME exams as well that we want to pull those all together so that when a cardiologist visits our sites, they can have the richest possible experience of our content. Uh, another thing we've been focusing quite a bit on in the last uh, few years is applying metadata to our multimedia and interactive content, uh, multimedia objects, to sort of free them up from the article package <laughs> to uh, set them free a little bit, uh, create some new pathways for users to, to discover uh, multimedia content. Uh, our multimedia <coughs> content is very popular, uh, particularly on the New England Journal site, uh, and also to enable new products and features. So I'd like to walk you through a couple of examples uh, that we've done uh, along those lines. What you see here is our um, browse multimedia feature on the New England Journal of Medicine website. <clears throat> when we uh, did a major redesign a couple of years back, one of the things that we really wanted to do was to provide some new ways of uh, discovering content outside of that issue article package. Um, letting users navigate by, uh, browse by article type, uh, go by medical specialty, by topic areas. Uh, and then also we wanted to provide these new pathways to find multimedia content. At the time that this design rolled in, we had none of the metadata that we needed <laughs> to support this uh, particular set of facets that you see down the side by media type. So I think this is a great example of uh, it was not predictable. <laughs> You know, um, product development moves forward, and we have to kind of find a way to uh, get the met metadata out there to support it. So what happened was we um, used a combination of automated um, and hand tagging methods to uh, go back through this uh, almost 70 years of content. Um, in the case where we could find a pattern, like if there's a figure or a table, a very predictable file name, we we're able to, to script that and apply a media type of figure or table to those uh, media objects. In other cases, like interactive maps or animations, was not so clear. So there was a combination of, of hand tagging and automation. Uh, we created some new tools internally, uh, some custom Java applications sitting on our MarkLogic database that let our editorial team uh, go through and tag archive content uh, objects as well as to do that going forward for all new multimedia objects that we create. And the end result of that has been, uh, by this point, uh, over 22,000 media objects tagged, <laughs> giving us a lot of possibilities for aggregating content, uh, as well as some of the facets that you see here, letting users filter on medical specialty, which is the specialty of the uh, parent article, so inherited down to the media object, um, by media type, which is our new taxonomy for, for media objects, and then certainly by date as well. Okay. Another popular feature that we have is our NEJM image challenge application. It uh, presents a clinical image and allows phys our physician users to test their clinical skills uh, in guessing what the diagnos uh, diagnosis is. Um, what we've done through a combination of metadata and web services is to be able to pull up different versions of image challenge. Um, in the one case you see on the, on the far end here, uh, last year we celebrated our 200th anniversary. <laughs> um, going back to uh, first issue of the uh, Boston Medical and Surgical Journal in 1812. 
pulled up a, a 200th anniversary website which included landmark medical research articles as well as this instance of image challenge that presented uh, images of his particular historical interest. So these were hand selected, hand tagged, we created some new metadata to be able to sort of isolate out uh, these uh, historical images from our modern images, certainly from a diagnostic perspective, <laughs> a little bit of a different uh, set of challenges. So um, we also did a 10 toughest quiz. And there again, uh, we, we, don't, uh, we don't require registration to use this feature, but we do capture how people did in taking these challenges. So we were able to distill that up into a set of, of toughest challenges and uh, take that down into our 10 toughest of all and create some metadata to be able to isolate those off and uh, deliver these into a new microsite that let us do things in addition to presenting these toughest challenges, also to experiment with some of these uh, social media pieces, uh, let people uh, like it and share it and tweet it, uh, and also some new ad positions as well. So this has been a, a very successful experiment. And finally, uh, we do have an iPhone app, which is a uh, randomized set of our most recent challenges. What you see here is our classic, this is the original NEJM image challenge application. I think the lesson here for me is don't forget where you started. <laughs> you can see we have um, well, almost 400 uh, clinical images at this point, and there's a lot of filters that we would like to add, including some of the filters that we've made available in these other versions. So being able to filter by date, being able to uh, add, you know, is it historical interest or is it modern? Um, medical specialty would certainly <laughs> be one we'd want to add. Uh, disease or condition, uh, region of the body. For some reason, um, eyeballs and brain scans <laughs> are apparently quite popular, so letting folks filter up by those categories. Uh, difficulty level, you know, show me the easiest, show me the most difficult. Uh, usage, which ones are users actually taking the most often? Uh, and then maybe some social metrics, who's uh, sharing, which ones are being shared the most often. Um, I think, you know, one of the things that would be very interesting also would be to look at things like how could we combine metadata with some user data to maybe show um, a, a user so a, a challenge that was very relevant to them. So if we know someone is a dermatologist, if they're signed in and they visit the image challenge, why not show them one of our great skin rash images <laughs> and, and let them sort of take that. So there's a lot we can do here. We're very excited about the options for applying new metadata to this feature. Um, and that's all I have.